IFP leader Mangasuti Butelezi said last week that his party would depoliticize the provision of services, take harsh action against incompetent public servants, give harsh sentences for corruption, and constantly monitor municipal managers' performances. Voting for any other, any other opposition party, says the IFP, would be a waste of a precious vote. Simongi Lenkomo, Secretary General of the IFP, joins me now to discuss her party's plans for this election. Swangil Nkomo, welcome to the show. It's, uh, it's always fantastic to have someone from the IFP here. I have to say, though, every time we sit down and say, OK, we're going to invite the IFP to come to the show, we look at the election results over the past 20 years. 10.5% when you started in 1994. 8.5%, 6.9%, you're down to 4.5%. It looks like you're a party that's going, going, going down and sinking. Well, th thank you very much for having us on your show, uh, Justice. I think one has to be realistic. Definitely, there has been quite a decline. But when one looks at the politics in South Africa, as well as the decline that has been happening in other political parties, except a, a, a rise within the DA, it's quite expected. A lot of our people are not actually declining simply because they want to decline. It's because they are disappointed in the delivery and everything else. And so the people are disappointed people. in oh. the IFP? No, not necessarily. They are actually disappointed in the delivery of services within broadly our government structure, as well as a lot of issues around corruption and everything else. So most people are actually sitting there with their votes and not voting. That Let is why we've noticed, even the ANC, I think you will notice that mm -hmm. um, probably it was the beginning of last month when they had an NEC meeting. One of the main issues which was written in the media is a matter which they were addressing. They were going to address the decline within their party. So it's not actually a decline which is noticed mm -hmm. only in the IFP. It's yes. also noticed uh, but, in other political but parties. But the, the, the logical thing would be that, oh, the ANC is in power, and the ANC is disappointing all these people, if indeed it is. And people would say, I'm looking for a new home. Oh, the IFP, that's who I'm going to go for. Why aren't people moving from all the, the, the party that's in power to the IFP? In fact, you were in power from 1994 to 2004 in, the, mm -hmm. in KwaZulu-Natal, KwaZulu and you Natal. lost that province. So people must have been disappointed in you. Let me start off by stating that we and the ANC, we fish from the same pond. That is why if there's non-delivery or there isn't any delivery coming from the ANC, it also has an impact on us because we get people from the same pond. So actually, if one looks at the percentages of the drop, you would find that it's more or less the same percentages. Secondly, we were definitely yeah, I don't charge. agree with you. You've lost 50% of your support base. The ANC hasn't lost that much. It went, in fact, the ANC in 1999 and 2004 went up. It's only now started to go down. The matter is why now? It's because, again, like I said to you, if we're not able to deliver to the people, the people who are basically the people that we're getting from the same pond will definitely punish us all. I think actually the matter of Guazul Natal is quite true. We were in power in Guazul Natal, and then we lost that province. But the policies that are being implemented even right up to today in Guazul Natal are most of the policies which we actually started off as the IFP, which is quite good. One of, those. one of those policies is basically the policies of if less circumstances you look at crime and you look at the traditional leadership, especially when I in Guazul Natal where we have a lot of the rural areas, the matter of traditional leadership comes up very strongly, which is a matter. You're telling that us that the ANC has basically taken on your policies to continue uh, in KwaZulu Natal and win that province. And they, they've actually taken most of our policies now and they are using them because our policies have worked. Isn't the, it time, the, the therefore, for you guys to join up with the ANC and to emerge instead of going with the EFF? Definitely not. We haven't even gone up with the EFF. We actually haven't gone up with any party. We are still the IFP. We are still going as the IFP, even if we have this massive cooperation for democracy with the other political parties. It's a matter of saying that whatever we agree on, mm -hmm. we go forth as a joint party or, mm. or as joint parties, but it does not mean that the IFP mm. will join any party. I, I, love, I love meeting people like yourself from the IFP because 
every time people talk about the IFP, certainly with the producers of this show, when he spoke about the IFP, people said, no, if it's not Mango Sutubitelezi, then it doesn't matter. Because Mango Sutubitelezi has been the leader of the IFP for nearly 40 years. So, you know, the other people don't really matter. When is Dr. Butelezi going to step down? Other people do matter in the IFP. If one looks at our constitution, you will discover that we have a lot of the leadership, leadership succession in our programs. We even have a deputy president now. Uh, it sounds Dr. like he's a relative. His name is Alphas Butelezi, and he is a cousin of the, of the no, leader? No, he's not. He's just a Butelezi by same name. They are not related. I just wanted to state that mm. His Excellency Nkosi Butelezi actually resigned three times from becoming the president of the party, and it was the conference of the IFP which actually brought him back. He actually is not staying there because he wants to be there. He's actually staying there as a president because the IFP, the people of the IFP have actually said he should, like now, take us through a transition. I know, but really for 40 years? It's not the first time that is happening. It actually started off the IFP, when one looks at the IFP, one looks at a party that started sometime in 1975. No, but, uh, but I, I would say to you, there are people like uh, uh, Ms. Magwazam Sibi who was marginalized and had to leave to start her new party because she wanted to be leader. And, uh, and uh, it sounds like people in the IFP don't like people like yourself coming up and becoming leader. Definitely not. They do love us like, I don't know but what. But they don't want that you to is be leader. Why, that is why, actually, you even have people like myself, who have the skills and the know-how, and I'm the Secretary General. When it comes to Magwazam Sibi, Magwazam Sibi was never driven away from the IFP. She actually left the IFP because she wanted to form her own party. No, no, she, she wanted to be leader of the party, but it became clear that there's a president for life. Definitely not. She took us to court in Marisbeck a few times because she wanted to be actually to actually go her own route and she went her own route and we wish her well and um, she has gone her own route and she has formed the nfp the 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 um leader of the ifp youth brigade in guamashu is uh, has been arrested for allegedly for the murder of two nfp uh, members there's been violence around the ifp in kwazulu natal with the nfp why is it your party seems to be at the heart of violence in, the, in, in KwaZulu Natal and in other parts in the past? But in KwaZulu Natal, there's still violence, and your party is always involved. Let us start with the past mm. and actually look at exactly where this violence could have started. When one looks at how this violence was actually spoken about or how it started even in the mm. early 70s. Let's not go too to much the in the past. We've run, we're running out of time. Okay, okay. When we look at what is happening in Guamashu right mm. now and most of the areas where you say there is violence, mm. we are stating as the IFP that if anybody, if anybody mm. is found to have actually gone against the law, that person needs to be arrested. And we are also saying it is alleged that this person mm. has done A, B, C, D. Let the court take its own course. We will not protect any criminals because the IFP is a peace party. So that person needs to go through the, the, the law. I haven't made up my mind about who I'm voting for on May 7th. Convince me in 30 seconds why I should vote for the IFP. Why you should vote for the IFP is because firstly, when it comes to our manifesto, we went through the length and breadth of the country talking to the people of South mm. Africa. We did what we called a listening campaign where we said to the people of South Africa, talk to us so that we come up with a manifesto that will include most of the areas or all the areas which are of concern to people. Areas around corruption, areas around service delivery, areas around unemployment. And then we said to the people of South Africa, mm. please do not stay at home with your votes. Go out, come out, vote for the IFP so that we can make a difference. We've been in I'm this game for long. I'm going to have to uh, stop you there, but thank you very much. I will think about your words carefully on May 7th when I go to vote. Thank you. After the break, our winner and loser of the week. Stay with us. News that moves. ENCA.com.